This is Jonathan with Sojourner's Way. Today I'm going to show you how I've been mounting solar panels to the top of school buses. At this point I've installed over 40 complete systems. I've removed uh, dozens of panels and I've installed hundreds of panels onto a lot of schoolies. I know what it takes and uh, I'm going to show you the easiest ways that I've found over two years of basically developing this system. Let's start with the parts that we're going to need. This is a simple green cleaning solution, microfiber towel, impact drill, regular drill. A set of gloves is nice. This is the rail I was telling you about. And these are the screws I use. And a 1 8 drill. I pre-drill for these. I don't like self-tappers. And then we've got a unibit, a step bit. That's great. You're going to need that. These are the mounts that I sell. And this is the respective hardware. Now one of the things I'm not a fan of is the Unistrut systems. That's where they take two pieces of Unistrut, mount it to the roof. The problem is you have a contour uh, radius to the roof, so the Unistrut mounts sideways, so they're kind of aiming out like that. It also leaves a track that basically can hold water, hold um, um, dust, hold dirt, particles, tree limbs, all that stuff. So not a fan of that. My first systems, I implemented some aluminum brackets and essentially made the same system I'm going to show you today, except I had to custom fabricate everything and it wasn't, it wasn't ideal and it was a lot more work. Then it dawned on me one day that, hey, people have been mounting solar to things for a long time. What are they using? So it's a question I should have asked much earlier on. So this is what's used in the solar industry. It's aluminum rail. It's got a track, a channel up here. It's got a channel right here. The channel on the side is what secures a bracket and then that gets secured to the roof. The channel up top allows you to connect a bracket that secures the panel. So this is the part of the job that requires two people. Uh, one of the biggest issues you're gonna come across is trying to find consistent markings on top of the school bus so you can put these rails as parallel as possible. Now, I've not found any other way to do this because counting rivets, measuring off the front or the rear or the sides is, is really difficult and I've not come up with consistent results. So I take one of these rails, I have someone on the ground come down and all they have to do is put a put the rail in a position that's consistent okay in this case the rail is contacting here and here it's not contacting up there and i'm also being intentional not to let it touch the ground so the person on the ground holds it here while the person up top marks the spot and you move down to the next one right in line with the rivets up top, you do the same thing. There are instances where the rail won't contact here and here, but it'll actually grab this one and this one. If that occurs, you have to either split the difference or skip over that one, go to the next one. On the roof, I'll show you how to resolve that. Once the person below has the pole in position, in this case, we're not able to completely get over here on top of the rivets because of the entrance so we're going to do our best and measure from where it's at 22 inches is about the sweet spot so mark the bus move down to the next set of rivets this one again isn't touching the rivets but it's okay we're going to use it as a reference anyways mark it 22 inches Once we've got marks, uh, like I said, sometimes you won't be able to get a consistent measurement off of there, so we do it right there in the blank area. So I've got the marking right here. Well, I just simply take the rail, line it up here, line it with the furthest mark, and then mark each set of rivets. These brackets come pre-drilled, and we're gonna always mount this system right over the rivets. The rivets are the strongest part of the bus. You've got this piece of sheet metal, you have this piece of sheet metal, and they're overlapping. But uh, then there's hat channel on the inside. That hat channel essentially is looking like that. So if we did the, the brackets right here, which would be much easier, you only get into both pieces of sheet metal. Whereas if you go right along with the rivets, we're also getting into the main frame on the inside. So in this case, we really want this guy to be right here but there's a rivet right in the way. I'm gonna show you how to resolve that. The safest way to do this part is probably with a drill press, 
but this is how I do it. I cannot recommend it to everyone. A regular drill does not work so well. Make sure this guy's sharp. Then uh, I just take this, I hold it in my hand. I do have gloves on, that helps. And if it were to catch, you would, uh, the drill's rotating to the right, it would pop out this way instead of going back towards my hand. I open this side, hit it just to put a chamfer on it. And now, it's gonna be able to go right here without issue. But I need one more hole, which I'm gonna put right here. Easy. Now generally I would have cleaned an entire bus off, but I'm not doing that today, so I've just got some simple green and a microfiber to clean the surface area. Now you can do this after you paint, but I actually prefer to do it before because I want to get the best adhering, adherence from the uh, adhesive caulking that I use. Which is a Sikaflex 295 UV, UV rated. This is not just a, like a caulking sealant, but it's also a very strong adhesive. At this point, you take your bracket, Put it in its location, mark your holes, get a good sharpie, not something like this. Now we want to drill. We use a 1 8 bit, and anytime you're drilling metal, make sure you're at slow speed. We've got this guy in one. You're going to do slow speed with mid to heavier pressure. That's how you do metal. The aluminum I drilled out of here, I'm not concerned about rusting on the top of this roof, but these metal flakes here that came from the steel, from the actual bus, if I leave these on the roof, they are going to put rust flakes everywhere. I see that all the time on new builds where someone came up and modified after and now their whole roof is rusted. I'm going to take a blower and get all this off of here before even the dew settles tonight. For this part, you need a quarter inch drive. And now, what we're trying to do is make a seal. So take this, put, I mean, maybe an eighth inch all around the parameter. All around the perimeter. Get into the insides. And that's about all you need, okay? No standing water is gonna be able to get into there. I also do a dab into each of the holes, so I make sure it actually goes into the hole a bit. Now this goes right into its location. And make sure you get find your hole. Do just where it oozes out just a bit on the bottom. Then I go to the top side. Get a little bit of a wiggle. That's just fine like that. They don't always line up the same. That's okay, the system is very forgiving. This one here, I had to put the hole right in the middle.
the rail system is very forgiving. The focus would be to make sure that the front mounting bracket and the rear mounting bracket and all the ones in between are in line. Beyond that, if for some reason the two parallel bars are slightly off, you know, not perfectly parallel, the system works all the same, right? So it's just a cosmetic issue. So our object here is to use these large panels, which I'll discuss a little bit later in the video. In fact, they're just like the one on the golf cart. And uh, because of the dimensions, we want between here and here, the two brackets, we want about 52 to 56 inches. These systems are designed for solar. So rather than reinventing the wheel and using something like Unistrut, making a mess up here, making a barrier that doesn't let uh, water move out, we can just use something like this. It's actually already designed for solar. It's all stainless, it's all aluminum. These come with a serrated flange bolt, which in my experience means you don't need any Loctite or anything. I've had zero issues. Tighten that down with the socket, you're done. Both rails are now on. I've got about a half inch difference. I'm like 53 and a half from uh, outside to outside on this side. And on this side, I'm like 54. That's so inconsequential. No one will think about it. No one will notice. Another, uh, a couple notes. Don't try to dress up the adhesive caulking. Uh, you're just making a mess out of it. Put it on there, let it squeeze out, let it go. The solar panels are gonna have plenty of breathing room because obviously there's room out to the sides. I like to have it as low profile as possible. Half inch to one inch off center is just fine. They make um, some attachment points I'll drop in some footage of that allow you to uh, connect your cables all the way down to wherever you're dropping into the bus for your electrical distribution panel. You're gonna use a entry gland, looks like this, to bring that into the bus. Nice and clean, simple, and I use the same adhesive caulking. These rails have the channel on the inside. They could be flipped around and oriented the other way, but just cosmetically, I prefer to do it this way. So there you have it. Install is complete. Really, that took me like two or three hours while I'm documented on video. Now this bus has a hump where it drops down. Some of the buses, and I'm planning on doing the panels behind that so it's kind of flush. Some of the buses do the opposite. They actually have a raised roof so the, the bump actually goes up. In those cases, if the rail overlaps, you actually need a larger, a longer bra bracket, which uh, I have those in stock. I have them custom made as well. A few notes about this system. As I said, I've got it on 50 or so buses, 40, 50 buses. I've sold the rails to a handful of people. They've installed themselves without issue. One of the downsides is it's hard to find. You can't always get this locally and you can't ship it or it's gonna cost you several hundred dollars because they come in 14 foot in 17 foot lengths. Now, I just installed 17 foot, which will give me five panels consecutively, assuming you're doing something in the stand, the larger residential panel range, which is what this system is designed for. Otherwise, the 14 foot panel will do four consecutively, or the 17 foot panel can do, you know, three panels, jump over a, uh, jump over a, a skylight or a, a emergency hatch, and then add the fourth panel. So there's lots of versatility. They're also designed so you can attach them and connect them in uh, continuity. So for full-size buses, I'll often install two sets of rails the entire length of the bus, do 3,000 watts of solar. They also come with these handy uh, attachments. Well, they don't come with them, but um, I'm selling these now with the systems so you can keep your wires all nice, neat, and clean and organized. Now, as we know, the roof radius, it's uh, got quite a bit going on, so you can't use a 90 degree uh, a 90 degree bracket or you're gonna wind up looking like this. I had these custom designed with my proprietary bend and so I have these ready to go for pretty much all buses. I also have the 90 degree uh, 
brackets like this for things like shuttle buses that have a flat roof. But this is the system I'm using. I'm putting together a kit now so I can send at least this part with the caulking adhesive, with the screws, with all the mounting hardware you need. And then you can source something like this locally. There's a handful of brands out there doing it. Iron Ridge is one of the really common names. I'm not a purist in any of this. It's all aluminum. It's all using stainless hardware. And there's several variations. This is a skinny one. I use this one on flatter buses. Um, and it's rated for 150 mile an hour uh, on, mounted to a residential roof, which they use beefier brackets and they're, they're lagging into wood. I don't, I've not had any issues with it. I've never had, a, as I said, panels come off and we're using the adhesive anyway, so it just really isn't an issue. I'm not attached to any specific brand. You're just gonna have to go to a local solar distributor and be ready to go, uh, have a vehicle that can carry 14 or 17 foot rails. They're not that expensive, um, especially compared to making your own Unistrut system. It's no more cost. So don't be uh, alarmed to that. If you have to drive a couple, three hours to get this stuff, I highly recommend it. You're gonna be super happy and the system is bulletproof. If this video has been helpful, I'd love for you to like and subscribe. I plan on unloading a lot more information and walkthroughs on how to get your solar, inverter, batteries, and those things set up for your bus. I also do consults where I map out a system based on your needs. I've got buses running, full-time air conditioning, running two mini splits, running water heaters off electric, all sorts of that. Um, it's what I do, so reach out to me. I'd love to help you out.